I'm going to make a pair of tiny robot sneakers so that my robot will be able to walk better on different surfaces. If you take a look at a modern pair of shoes, you'll notice that the sole is constructed out of a rubber sheet followed by a squishy foam layer. And this allows the shoe to conform to the ground as you're walking. And that gets you a little more grip. The rubber layer is there to protect the foam so that it doesn't get abraded away instantly. I have some foam that I got from some command hooks. It's a foam tape that they use and it'll provide a little bit of squish and uh, rubber from a rubber band. And I'm going to glue those together using super glue. My first step will be to clean and prepare the surface of my little robot shoes with acetone. Next, I'm going to stick the foam tape onto the little robot shoes. Next, I'm going to cut strips of rubber out of my rubber band. Now I'll stick them down to the foam tape. And now I'll douse them all in super glue. And now we wait for them to dry and periodically press down on them to make sure that the rubber pads are seated on there. It helps to be in a humid environment and blow some air over it so that it dries faster. So I've had these cooling in the wind tunnel for about 30 minutes and uh, I call it good there. Now I'm going to trim off the excess all around all the corners. The uh, easiest way for these bonded joints to fail is being peeled back. It's just like when you take a sticker off, you peel it from the corner. So I'm going to trim off all of this excess on the edges. Now that I've got them mostly trimmed up, I'm going to finish up the job with a Dremel. Alright, so now they're all done. They're looking pretty spiffy. Now I'm going to put them on the robot and see if it walks any better. I have it plugged back in and now it's standing on its new pair of shoes. And it, I can already tell that it's able to hold position a lot better. Alright, now we'll try walking again and see if the shoes have made anything better. Okay. <laughs> so I think I need to program it so that it picks it, its foot up higher off of the ground. And maybe even walk a little bit slower. So I'm going to dive into the code and see if I can change those parameters. So I found the part of the function that defines how high the leg is picked up when it's walking. So I'm going to increase these values by double. Uh-oh. Well, uh, that shut it down pretty quick. Okay, gotta do some debugging. Okay, so after a couple hours of, uh, trying things out. I think I figured out what's wrong with the robot. When I make small maneuvers like this, it's able to run fine. But when I start taking bigger steps, I just have to keep the speed down. When I start going too fast, I start running out of electricity. And uh, then it's not able to keep moving the way that it needs to move in order to stay walking and standing. But as long as I make small motions like this, it works just fine. In better news, the shoes are working great. They have a lot more traction on this hardwood floor. And I can reliably move from point A to point B as long as I keep it slow. One of the legs is just 
slacks are behind. I'm going to see if I can modify the gate in order to make it more power efficient. Then I might be able to walk a little faster. Ooh, I can crab walk pretty fast though. <laughs> posing function is fun, so I can walk around like this. If I switch into the posing mode, I can have the robot look up at the camera. Hello! And uh, twist around. Hello! <laughs> So one thing I can do to make it more power efficient when it's walking is to have the legs more straight instead of bent like they are now. By having the legs straighter while it's walking, that'll mean there's less torque on the knee joints. And you can have some intuition of this because when you're walking around, you're keeping your knees mostly straight so you don't have to power those joints. If you're squatting around everywhere, you get quite a workout. So, let me see if I can make that change without coming in a later video. Bye-bye!